So those projects began as an attempt to assign numerical scores to countries around the world for their human rights practices. And we started by looking at the respect for physical integrity rights. Those are the rights not to be tortured, disappeared, imprisoned for political reasons, or killed without judicial procedure. The project is now the largest and most widely used set of scores about human rights anywhere in the world. And these scores are actually not just important to research and teaching, they're also important for real policy decisions. The United States, for example, has a provision in its foreign aid program and in many others where countries are treated differently depending on whether uh, the phrase often used in our legislation the government systematically violates the human rights of its people. The scores that we produce are helpful in making those decisions. The Human Rights Institute has a number of projects uh, that are designed to help students get involved in improving human rights and respect for human rights. While our focus and my own research focuses on all nations of the world, most of what goes on in the Human Rights Institute is about the United States. And there are lots of projects that are being implemented by the Human Rights Institute that are designed to make, make the United States a better place in terms of treatment of refugees, in terms of uh, combating the, the rise of white nationalism, and of course, we bring lots of speakers in to talk on a wide variety of human rights issues which educate the, the whole community. Governments don't really want to respect rights. They're inconvenient. And so unless there are strong constitutional provisions and independent judiciary, a media to hold them accountable, they will ignore them. We th always thought that uh, controlling the judiciary and the media was the tools most commonly used by tyrants. But what we're finding is that those are, hard, those are the least respected rights even in democratic states. Human rights are actually tools that citizens can use against powerful states. There are powerful players in the world who disagree on the criteria, and even if they agreed on the criteria, they wouldn't want to have something as clear as a score to show how poorly they're performing. Because if people have more awareness of that, they know how their own country is doing relative to others, and maybe it leads to useful social action. My name is David Singrinelli. I'm a professor of political science and co-director of the Human Rights Institute at Binghamton University.